Hi, I'm Dave Epstein. Welcome to Growing Wisdom. And I want to share with you a trip I just took. I was really fortunate to be able to go to the Galapagos Islands, and it's off the coast of Ecuador in South America. And while there, I met some great people, saw some wonderful things, met a great guide named Jairo. And just all in all, it was a fantastic trip. One of the things we got to see a lot of were certainly a variety of plants. Take a look. So we have sedges, of course, all across the United States. And here in Galapagos, we've got the Galapagos sedge. And you can see how beautiful it is. And it's got these great seed pods. And look how it sort of spreads out here, just naturally keeping all the soil in place, the volcanic soil, of course, of the Galapagos Islands. So we went on this hike, and it was a fairly long hike. We were actually climbing up a volcano heading towards the caldera of the volcano, the opening, and we ended up under the Ciruela tree. And this was a great tree. I really was into this tree. It was so expansive. The branch structure was just amazing. And one of the things I noticed is how many different species of plants were using the tree to grow, and especially bromeliads. There were a lot of bromeliads in the tree that were just sitting there and were doing fine and thriving. It also provided quite a bit of shade in what was a very hot day. We then continued our walk and we found these beautiful pink, almost lacy like string things hanging down out of a tree. And I said to the guy, what is this? And he said, that's actually a parasitic plant. So the plant is harming the tree, but it was so beautiful. I had to take some photographs of it. And then behind the tree, you can kind of see back there, there's some bamboo. And that bamboo is very tall, stretching up some 40 or 50 feet and the canes on it were very thick as well. I have a nice clump of bamboo in my own yard back in the United States here, but nothing at all like that. So we continued the walk, and of course there was a lot of other plants. This is lantana, and lantana I give to some clients sometimes for an annual plant here in the Northeast, but unfortunately in the Galapagos it was introduced and it spreads and it doesn't die, so that was a problem. There were a lot of ferns on the Galapagos as well, and I love this one because it had that red stem, and it was right next to another one that reminded me of a Boston fern, and then there was another fern next to that. So you had this interesting area of just so many ferns, and because it's fairly misty there, where we were walking got a lot of mist coming off the ocean. Even though it was full sun, the ferns still thrived. And then there was this guy. This is the Galapagos carpenter bee. the polypodum fern. This is meaning multiple feet. And this particular fern also grew everywhere. Really nice. Then we had the guava. And again, this is an introduced tree, so it comes up everywhere. You can eat it, it's delicious, but it doesn't belong there. So it's a real problem in parts of the Galapagos. And they've tried to eradicate it on some of the islands. Don't forget, the Galapagos are made up of several different islands. You might be surprised that you can actually walk around the islands like this. Some of the islands are populated with thousands of people. Others, you're not allowed to go to. We also had the Galapagos sedge, and this was nice and thick. And you know, I'm trying to get folks to use sedge lawns around these parts as a replacement for grass. And this was just growing naturally, this Galapagos sedge. And you can see how thick it was blotting out the weeds. And that's why it makes a great lawn alternative as well. We continued our tour and we saw this wonderful plant. I asked what this was, and this is a scorpion tail plant. And it does sort of look like a scorpion tail as it grows and kind of curls up at the end. Really nice leaves and really stood out against the ferns in the background. A guide then pointed this plant out called the cat's claw plant. And you can see those little thorns on it really looking like a cat's claw. And then we went to the Darwin cotton tree after that. Beautiful flower, looks like a hibiscus, related to hibiscus. And it also had some of the seed pods and a little bit of that cotton left in a couple of places. You could actually see why it's called the Darwin cotton plant. 
So after that particular hike, we ended up down near a mangrove swamp. And what was interesting about this particular area is it had all four types of the Galapagos Island mangroves right in this one little area. We had the black mangrove, the red mangrove, the button mangrove, and the white mangrove. One of the things I really like is when you come across a tree that has these huge canopies. And this particular tree, our guy told us this was a soap tree or jaboncilla tree. The tree reminded me of a big beech tree, to be honest. I looked at it and it really stood out in the distance. And then as we got underneath it, you could see just how big it was. But what a great tree. When you're in Ecuador, if you look at a map, you're right on the equator. So we went to the equator and it was interesting for me as a meteorologist to be on the equator. I kind of hopped back and forth between the northern and southern hemisphere. And then they had me walk on the equator. And it was strange because as you close your eyes, you could actually feel some sort of a pull of the earth. So remember, right on the equator, things aren't really spinning in terms of Coriolis force. And I'm getting a little technical for you, but there's Coriolis force to the north and there's Coriolis towards the south, but there's nothing right on the equator. And that fact actually was making it difficult to walk. 